This is the Jerry Rigged Podcast, your no-nonsense knowledge base for business technology, marketing, and analytics. And now your host, Jerry Sirstead. We got some folks from the Tennessee Mountains. That's awesome. So uh, thanks for chiming in. My name is Jerry Sherstead, and um, I am a 25 to 27 year marketing and business analysis and Salesforce veteran. Been around a long time, and we're just going to have some fun and kick it. And if you got questions, throw them out at me because that's what we're going to do. So today we're going to talk about some numbers, okay? Because numbers is where it's at. And when I went through this process, uh, I was all about creating something or, you know, trying to really understand what works and what doesn't work when it comes to uh, uh, job hunting, right? So we're going to talk about some numbers. we got some questions. At the very end, uh, I'm going to have some tips and tricks and some resources for you that I will post. And then also I have what I call a silver bullet. And I think you're going to really like the silver bullets really target around the folks that are looking for that experience, that job experience, and they just can't seem to really uh, <clears throat> nail it down, you know, because it's so hard when you don't have experience, but you need experience, but you got to have experience to get the experience. So it's kind of a catch 22 thing there. So Quick story about myself. Um, I'm a bit ADD. Any of my friends that hang out with me know this. Jason Zykowitz out of Phoenix here. He knows this, but I think he's a little ADD as well. Uh, so last August, <clears throat> I was working on some Salesforce projects, and I kind of decided that I wanted to get a full-time W-2 job. I've always been kind of an entrepreneur, but I like this concept of having regular income, right? It's uh, something that kind of makes us feel, um, I don't know, secure. And so I decided that I was going to kind of turn it into a mission and I was going to track it. I was going to come at it from my background in business analytics. I was going to come at it from my marketing background and I was just really going to like track everything and fully understand so that at the end of this process, I would have some idea as to what was working and what wasn't working. And I could uh, communicate that to like, for instance, you right here. And so <clears throat> what I did was um, I took this approach where I was going to throw anything and everything against the wall. I was going to apply for jobs that I wasn't qualified for. I was going to apply for jobs that I was fully qualified for. I just wanted to get into interviews and I just wanted to bomb. I, you know, I mean, it's uncomfortable when you bomb, but what's cool about bombing is that you learn, you learn, you get those, uh, those bumps and scrapes, you get those bloody elbows and bloody knees and you walk away just going, Oh, Man, that did not feel good. But I write that down and go, okay, why did I bomb? What did I say that was wrong? Um, you know, what were they looking for? Many times what you have and what they're looking for are two different things, right? So I just, that was kind of my mission. So I just wanted to get in there, get these, uh, these interviews going. And obviously for some of us folks, getting an interview, period, is one of your your hardest things to do. And for my first two or three months interview here and there, then towards the end, I was getting hit up by recruiters between five and 10 times every single day. I would have anywhere from eight to nine interviews in a given week. And I bombed and I did pretty good on some. I did average on others. Sometimes you do great on an interview. They still don't want you because they pick somebody else. So that, that was kind of my strategy just starting out, just to give you a little bit of background. Um, <clears throat> here's a few things that I learned out of the gate. And we're going to go over some more numbers here in just a little bit. But one of the, some of the things that I've learned was the, the power of the platform, <clears throat> in the old days, your platform was the newspaper and it was kind of one way. You opened the newspaper, you looked for a job, you found some job openings, you got in your car, 
you drove to the office, you submitted your resume, <clears throat> and then you hoped that somebody would uh, talk to you, or you called them up on the phone, you set an appointment for an interview. Today is actually better. I know there's some folks out there that say that the whole system is broken, and that's not my opinion. I just think it's different. Um, there are some things within the job search system that are broken, that don't work too well, but that was the case back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way through. So some of the platforms, and write this down or put this in your notes, LinkedIn, Indeed, Dice. Now, a lot of what I'm going to say today, you may not agree with, it may not be your experience, and I may say some stuff that's even wrong and I want you to hit me up on LinkedIn and let me know, hey, that wasn't right. What, what you said didn't make any sense. So, um, and that's okay. Send that to me. I want to know about it. Um, but this has been my experience. So I ended up on kind of three job platforms, LinkedIn, Indeed, and Dice. And for Salesforce roles, Salesforce administrator, Salesforce business analyst, um, all of those types of roles are plenty on those platforms. By the thousands, those roles are there. And they're being uh, posted by internal recruiters at companies, external recruiters that are at agencies, and, um, you know, just all over the board. So first thing about resumes, customization, got to do it. You got to do it. If you have a base resume and it's looking pretty good, maybe you wrote it yourself or you're using tealhq.com to write your resume, which is a great way to go. Um, every single resume has to be customized for that specific job, period, full stop. And if you're just pumping out the same resume, you're kidding yourself. It makes you feel good because you bragged to all your buddies. Hey, I sent out 85 resumes this week. Um, you're almost wasting your time. Not saying it's impossible to get a job by pumping out your same resume. Um, I'm saying if you want to work smart, work more effective, have a higher probability of getting calls and making things happen, you got to have that resume tailored, keyword matched to the job description. Because the first gate, the first roadblock you're going to hit is the computerized ATS system. And the ATS system has no feelings. It doesn't care about you. It's going to scan those resumes and it's going to look at the job description and it's going to look at a resume and it's going to say, this resume has a 23% fit, 23% match to the job description. And if, and if your resume doesn't have it, you're at 23%, you're kind of wasting your time. You want to get to like 80% and above. So uh, let's see here. Going through my notes, uh, demystifying the hiring process. There's lots of criticisms, like I said, about the hiring process. The hiring process is broken. What do I do? I can't, you know, I pumped out 80,000 resumes and nobody's calling me. Well, you got to look at your process. It's not the hiring process that is the problem. Almost never. You got to look at your process. Is it your experience or lack thereof? Do you have a lot of experience, but in the wrong, the wrong sector, the wrong field? There's a lot of things in that chain. So think of this whole process like a chain. And you got to make sure that all your chains, all your links are connected. Recruiters, yep, they're going to ghost you. They're, they're out there trying to make a commission and they don't feel like you're worth their time. Psh, they're gone. Uh, the, I call this the LinkedIn effect. Optimizing your profile for your target role can exponentially boost your chances of getting calls and interviews. Think of your profile as a canvas that showcases your expertise particularly in active and in-demand sectors. If you're trying to be a Salesforce business analyst, your resume just has to bleed 
Salesforce business analysts from top to bottom, from the header to your headshot to your headline, all the way through to your job experience, your projects, your certifications, everything. Let's see here. Sidebar. Uh, let's talk about articles. If you're writing articles and posts on LinkedIn, bingo. That's good. And it feels like sometimes you're writing and you're posting and you're putting all this stuff out. Nothing's really happening. It is. It's, you know, I love the analogy. It's like eating an elephant one bite at a time. It's the only way you can do it. So you just keep doing that. It just has to be, you get up, take a shower, eat breakfast, write your post for the day or write to that day and schedule them out. And that's just going to be part of what you do every single day uh, or two, three times a week. Uh, let's see here. So your LinkedIn profile is going to be part of the equation, but it's not the entire equation, okay? Because you got resumes, and you got lots of uh, other factors that you're going to have to look at. So make sure you're paying attention, like I said, to that chain, those links in that chain. And, um, you know, just really, really paying attention to that. Because uh, if you got one link missing, um, you're going to do a bunch of work and you're not really going to get anywhere. You're not going to get any, get any traction. So let's talk about experience versus certification. We're going to get more into that as I get into the numbers from my, because I have a whole uh, database of numbers that I pulled together from all of these interviews that I did. And actually 62 is, uh, that's an old number. That's about a month old. I'm closer to about 76, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of interviews. So experience versus certification. Think of uh, experience as a donut or think of that whole piece as a donut. Uh, your real world experience is the donut, the cake, the actual donut itself. And think of your certifications as the frosting with the sprinkles. OK, so. A donut's really good. It's not plain. It tastes good. It's sweet when you have the donut and the frosting experience and certifications but a donut doesn't taste very good if you only have the frosting right and the sprinkles that's your certifications now you can eat a donut all day long by itself and it tastes great it tastes a little better with some frosting but it tastes great so i spent years uh, with crm roles and in the salesforce ecosystem as well as hubspot and other uh, areas and never had any certifications. So, and you'll learn more when we get into the numbers here in a quick second. Uh, but certifications are important and I'm not taking anything away from certifications. What I'm saying is if you only have certifications and no experience, I'd say there's a 98% chance you're probably not going to get any work unless you find that one small company and they're like, well, nobody here knows anything about Salesforce. You know something about Salesforce, so we need you. So, you know, it's not impossible to get hired with strictly a Salesforce admin certification, but it's really, really hard. It's really hard. So um, my LinkedIn strategy has been to, like I said, target my role. I'm a Salesforce business analyst, and that's what I targeted. So my suggestion because sometimes there's kind of a, a, a knee jerk to want to do lots of different things and just throw stuff out there. But I found that you got to pick a horse and you got to ride it. My horse is the Salesforce business analyst role uh, journey. So if yours is marketing, then maybe it's marketing cloud um, or Pardot. Well, you know, account engagement. Um, but. So just pick a horse, ride it, and focus on that because it's too hard. If you got too much stuff going out there, people will look at your profile or your resume and they won't understand like, you know, what does this person do? What, what are they good at? So every, like I said, every nook and cranny of my LinkedIn profile is 100% Salesforce business analyst focused. So let's get into some numbers, the fun stuff. After all these interviews, some of the stuff that I learned and uh, I'm going to pull, pull out my, my slide, slide deck, deck here and, and make sure I got the right. Uh, let's see here. Make sure I got the right. Oh, 
Okay, let's see here. There, there we go. go. Okay. okay. It's working. Yay. All right, right so, so here's, here's where we're at, at uh, on the, the numbers. numbers. 60 to 75 or so interviews. interviews. I tracked a lot of information. I tracked a lot of my uh, my data and my my interviews and who I was talking to and what job role it was. I was talking to them, or I was tracking all this in Trello, which is a free app, by the way, for kind of a project management type app. And so um, one of the things that I learned out of the eight was that 60 to and some of this stuff might kind of blow your mind a little bit because it kind of blew mine. 60 to 70 percent of the hiring managers have zero clue about the Salesforce ecosystem. Now we all get into it, right? And we're in trailhead, we're going to local events and all this stuff. And we're just all plugged in. We know all about you know trailhead and the badges and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, most of these guys don't, don't even know what it is. is. Never heard of Trailhead. Don't know what a badge is. So when you think about that, you think about your LinkedIn profile, and if you got, I got this badge and that badge and this badge and that badge, I would say that you're probably uh, talking about stuff that nobody cares about, or at least a lot of people don't care about. Somebody says, I got an echo going on here. Let's see here. Let me try that. Okay, I just muted a, a audio channel. So we'll see if that works. So most want to know, do you have the experience to do the job? Pure and simple. You got a recruiter. He or she is trying to make a commission. They have a role to fill. And the role to fill is a business analyst. Where have you done it? And tell me about your experience. So that's that. So let's go on to the next one here. Uh, let's see. 50% of hiring managers. Now, some of these numbers are not exact, but they're roundabout, kind of what I experienced. 50% of the hiring managers I talked with uh, didn't know what Trailhead was, didn't know that, some of them didn't even know that Salesforce offered certifications. Think about that. So you folks out there, they got 28 certifications and no job experience. My suggestion is that you might want to start focusing your time on getting some of that experience. And if you'll hang around for my silver bullet, I got a really, really cool way to show experience on your resume and your LinkedIn profile. Really cool. And I think you're going to like it. All right. 30 to 40 percent of recruiters that I made contact with me uh, ghosted me. Yep. When it first happens, you're kind of like, what a bunch of jerks. And it, <laughs> at first I was trying to chase them down. Like, hey, hey, man, you, you and I were talking. What, what, where'd you go? Did, did you quit? Did you go to, uh, to a really long lunch? Do you not like me? What, what's going on? And what I learned is uh, some of these guys are seriously commission driven and they're looking for low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging fruit is that, that role that is ready to start. They're ready to hire somebody, and you're the perfect candidate. Then they're going to stick with you. But if they feel like, hmm, Jerry's not really our guy, they're gone. So my suggestion is quit wasting time complaining, especially on LinkedIn. By the way, no complaining on LinkedIn. <laughs> that, that's my tip for the day. It's kind of like peeing in your own swimming pool because all your recruiters and all your hiring managers are on LinkedIn and they see you complaining. So, you know, when they're trying to decide whether to bring you on board in those final stages and it's between you and two other people, that might be the deciding factor. It's like, eh, this guy, Jerry, he's very experienced, but God, everything on LinkedIn is, woe is me, oh, life sucks. Okay. 30% of job descriptions that I came across uh, show duties and requirements. They had nothing to do with the job. Yeah, it, it, it blows your mind sometimes. 30% uh, of most of the job descriptions that I saw trying to slip in, you know, extra stuff. Let's just say that extra stuff. So a couple of years ago, 
uh, you'd see a role for a Salesforce administrator, right? And the administrator role would just say Salesforce administrator uh, wants you to have a Salesforce uh, certification, um, BA degree or equivalent experience. Pretty straightforward. Now uh, the job role is titled or the job description is called uh, Salesforce administrator. And then you start reading must have Salesforce administrative certification, must have background with development, must have, must know Apex, must be able to write in JavaScript, uh, must know Mark Benioff on a personal basis, must have been to the Salesforce uh, campus at least 22 times. I mean, some of these job descriptions are ridiculous. So you want to read through and you just want to understand these companies want more for their money than they've ever wanted ever. 60% of recruiters that contacted me were looking for a quick commission. Fast talking. Don't care about you in the least. They're trying to make a commission. If they don't see a perfect match, boom, they're gone. I don't really like those type. But if they can get me from A to B, A to a, you know, now to a job interview, sometimes I kind of just roll with it. Let's see, or uh, let's see, uh, one of our folks says, other duties, Cheryl Evans said, uh, other duties as a sign was quoted heavily in her prior career. Other duties, like uh, we want you to be a Salesforce administrator, and we also want you to sweep the floors at night and uh, empty all the trash in the building. And then on Saturdays, we want you to come in and wash the windows. So yeah, some of these guys are, I don't know, in my opinion, a little bit greedy, 15 to 20% of the recruiters I came across were good, super good. I interacted with them. You could tell that they actually cared about the people they're working with. They are, the good recruiters are looking to make a relationship. They're thinking down the road. Man, if I make a relationship with this guy, Jerry, he's been around a while. He knows this stuff. He may start a role. It may not work out, which happens. And so he's going to be on my list because I got lots of clients that need Salesforce BAs and I can move him to another client. So if you're working with a recruiter that has a turn and burn type process, you're probably going to talk to them and never see them again. But the ones that want to develop relationships, they're awesome. They become your buddies. They become people that you get to know. They, they, they want to get to know you as a, as a human. And so those are the ones that I love working with. Um, once in a while you get these crazy calls and just, uh, recruiters, you just like first thing out of their mouth. Hey, what's your rate? I don't know for what, for raking leaves, uh, for mowing lawns or as a Salesforce administrator, what, what, what are you asking me? And so what I try to do, and I do it about 98% of the time is I ask them, well, first of all, let's slow down because some of these recruiters, they're really, uh, they're being pressured by their managers to make X number of calls a day. And so they're, they're making them. And so what happens is they get in a rush. They're trying to rush you on the call. What's your rate? Where do you live? You know, do you have a certification or whatever? And what I usually do is I try to control the conversation. Well, talk to me a little bit about the role. So then I tell them, Kate, email me a job description so I can review that. And then we can talk about money. And then the first thing I ask them is, what does the client have budgeted for this role? I would say 95% of the time, they just tell me. And a lot of times I may be thinking, you know, let's say $50 an hour. And then they come back with, well, we can't pay any more than $60 an hour. So if I would have thrown out a number, he probably would have ran with it. And then I just, you know, lost out on $10 an hour. So try to get them to give you a number and never just throw out some number. Just, you know, slow the process down and tell them to send you a job description because the job description many times will just automatically cut off the conversation because they're asking for too much. Um, three to four interview rounds was typically what I saw. Uh, once in a while, I saw five, but never less than three. Um, actually about a year and a half ago, I got hired at a company, spent about nine months there on a contract and one interview. And the next morning, the agency called me and says, well, you're hired. 
they need somebody right away and she liked you. So that happens once in a while. So, you know, be, be prepared. Out of 60 inter, 62 interviews, I saw about seven-ish that even talked about Salesforce certifications. 90% of the time, they never even asked. They didn't ask if I had any certifications, just just was not concerned. They were concerned about experience. And um, many recruiters, like I said, just flat do not know how the entire ecosystem, the Salesforce ecosystem actually works. Uh, let's see here. Job application submittals. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, let's see here. Yes, uh, Christina Gardner was saying here on our ch- on our uh, messages that she's had some really positive interactions with recruiters and met some wonderful people, and I absolutely agree. There's a guy out of Dallas, Texas, Kiro Whitey, with uh, Third Republic, Third Republic, yeah, Third Republic. They're an agency, and all he does is Salesforce. That's it. He lives and breathes Salesforce roles. You can spend a minute with him on LinkedIn and he will tell you straight up, cut to the chase. You know, if you don't have this, if you don't have that, uh, get it. And then maybe we can talk. So some of these recruiters are really, really deep into Salesforce and know what's going on and know what's going on on the street and in the market. Back again to the uh, customized Every single job submission must be customized. Otherwise, you are flat wasting your time. That's what I'll say. And I know some might disagree with me. And that doesn't mean that you absolutely cannot get a job without customizing your resume. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, um, there are some tools. Back to Teal. Uh, I, I tried multiple software platforms. Uh, Teal rocks. And once you get a system with Teal, it you know going in, it will look at the job description. Teal will look at the job description, look at your base resume and go, hey, Jerry, your resume matches, the keywords on it match 23% of the job description. So the next question is, why would you even bother submitting your resume if only 23%? ATS is going to kick it out that quick. So take the time, slow down. If your resume... Okay, we just talked about that. If your resume matches 20%, why would you even bother? It takes more time per submission. That's what a lot of people say. I don't like customizing every single resume for every single job. I mean, when I tell this to some people, it blows their mind. You mean to tell me I got to take every single resume and tailor it and tweak it for every specific job that I apply for? Yes. And which also... uh, forces you to look for jobs, just the jobs that you should be applying for. If you're just praying and spraying, or what's the term? Spraying and praying. If you're just doing that, you're just you're just burning time is what you're doing. If you want results, you focus on the jobs you're good at, the ones you think you will enjoy, and you go after them. You use Teal, and Teal will tell you exactly how much of your resume. Then you tweak it, tweak it, tweak it till you get that to about a 90% match. Now, when you submit that resume, you feel good because you know that your resume is going to blow past all of the lazy people. So when you see a job posting and it says 800, 800 submissions, it's easy to go, oh, 800 people have applied for this job. That doesn't bother me. Because I know out of 800, probably 750 are lazy. And they're just pumping out the same resume. My resume is going to go boop right past all of them, right to the top of the list. And I'm going to get put in front of the, uh, the hiring manager. So you'll get more calls. So my interviews included initial uh, phone calls from recruiters, interviews with recruiters, account managers from re- recruiting agencies, hiring managers, technical panels. If you get an interview with Salesforce itself, you'll get in front of a technical panel many times. And then you get the cultural fit interviews. Some of them, like they're already okay with taking a chance on your experience and your background. They just want to make sure that, you know, you're not a knucklehead. 
They want to make sure that they can work with you every single day. You're going to be fun to work with. You're going to get your your work done. So those are more, more, more of those uh, cultural fit type interviews. So lots of different types of interviews. Um, some of the interviewers that were interviewing me, uh, sometimes I walked away going, he didn't know nothing. He didn't know nothing about the job. He didn't know anything about the Salesforce ecosystem. Not even sure why they had that guy interviewing me. So some of them were clueless. Uh, some of them were very technical. Um, the, the, the nerdy folks, the developers and the guys that are like in the vice president of um, technology with a company sometimes um, have zero personality. <clears throat> they'll hit you with a few technical questions. If you can pass that bar, they're good. They don't care <laughs> whether you're fun to work with or not. They just see that they can check off their list that you had some technical knowledge and you more or less knew what you were talking about. Uh, there was a couple that out and out disrespected me. Yeah, I cut those interviews short. Uh, after a while, you just kind of get, you know, hey, look, I'm bringing a lot to the table. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to bust my 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 patootie and I'm going to be a team player. So talk to me on that level. Some were super cool. Some of the interviewers that I that I interviewed with were very cool and um, actually cared. Like you could tell they actually care about somebody other than themselves. So that's always a good thing. I had two interviews that I had to cut short and told them I just I just decided that I don't want to work for your company. Like, and I actually told them that. Um, you kind of get a little bit of an idea of how you're going to be treated during the interview, especially if you're interviewing with the uh, the hiring manager. Because the hiring manager many times is going to be your report to, your, your manager. And during the interview, if you're getting red flags and bad signals or they're rushing the interview or they're being short and curt, they may just be having a bad day or that may be the person you have to inter interact with every single day of your job. So, you know, just keep that down. Not saying you shouldn't go to the next interview, just saying, you know, mark that down, just kind of something to take note of. Uh, let's see. One guy, one recruiter calls me literally first words out of his mouth. Hi, um, we have an open role. Um, uh, but before we get going, can you show me your driver's license? Yeah, sure. I'm going to show you my driver's license. I don't know who you are or where you're calling from. I'm going to show you my driver's license. And he actually had a legitimate reason why he wanted it because their system needed, I don't know what it was, the last four digits of my driver's license number or something for their system. But, you know, I, I don't want to work with those guys. <laughs> All right, so here's some takeaways. Uh, let's see here. Some of them got cut off on the bottom there. Recruiters. When it comes to recruiters, I have to say all in all across the board, good and bad, I actually prefer the recruiter path versus the, uh, you know, submit resumes and apply for job postings. And I'll tell you why. Um, the recruiter path. Well, first of all, when you see a job posting on LinkedIn or Indeed or Dice or whatever, and you look at it, you go craft your resume, you customize it, you do all these things. You're trying to get your resume through the first gate. That's the ATS system. Because you're trying to get to the next step, which is in front of HR recruiting or in front of the hiring manager. That's, that's what your ultimate goal is, to get from your desk to the desk of the hiring manager who's going to set up an interview. Well, when you apply for a job, you got to submit your resume and sit and wait and wonder, you know, what's going on? Did they get it? You know, is there 18,000 people applying? A recruiter many times knows the hiring manager uh, personally. Like they go out to lunch together sometimes. They go out to dinner together. They golf together. Some of these recruiters know the hiring manager and they want to look good. And if they think you're kind of a little rock star, that, that recruiter is going to call up the uh, hiring manager and go, hey, I got this lady named Susie who has phenomenal experience, and I think you should look at her. So that recruiter hand delivers your resume 
to the hiring manager bypasses all ATS systems. So that's the beauty of a recruiter. National numbers show that only 2 to 3% of resumes that are submitted end up on the hiring manager's desk. So if a thousand resumes come through on a job posting, maybe 20 are going to sit on the hiring manager's desk. I think my numbers are right. 2% of 100, yep, about 20. So if, if there's, you know, 100 submissions, they receive 100 resumes, two or three of them are, are going to go on the desk because they're not going to, you know, no hiring manager or HR recruiter is going to sift through a thousand resumes. They're just not going to do it. That's why they invented that ATS system. And if you understand the whole keyword process of the ATS system, you can shoot right past everybody and have a way higher chance of getting in front of hiring managers. Uh, so think about that. LinkedIn profile optimized. The beautiful thing about optimizing your LinkedIn profile properly is that recruiters will come to you. I went two months, never applied for one job and had multiple interviews, all recruiters, all from my LinkedIn profile. So recruiters kind of have their own ATS system. And LinkedIn, for instance, which is the epicenter of hiring managers, jobs, and job seekers, LinkedIn has some software called, I think it's called LinkedIn Recruiter, if I, if I remember correctly. So if I'm, a LinkedIn, if I'm a recruiter and my job is to find people for companies that have open roles, I'm on LinkedIn seven days a week almost, and I'm using their software and I'm doing searches. Okay, I need, okay, Bob over here is the hiring manager at ABC Home Builders. He needs a Salesforce business analyst. So I go on to LinkedIn and I do a search, Salesforce business analyst. And if you're optimized, you're going to come up high on the list and that recruiter is going to call you. So LinkedIn profiles are where it's at. Resumes are a close second if you're applying for roles. Make sure your base resume matches your LinkedIn profile. That's important. Let's see here. That was, okay, there we go. The certification debate, we talked about that. Certifications are great for beginners, but they don't overshadow real world experience. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. Next slide. I uh, only got a few more here. Hiring manager expectations today, a Salesforce administrator is often expected to have additional skills like business analysis, developer, or marketing expertise. So if you only have a Salesforce administrator certification, uh, you're going to have a tough time. If you got a Salesforce administrator certification and you got two different job roles, maybe a year to two years each on your experience, on your resume and your LinkedIn profile, then you've just upped your chances of getting a, a role, of being more desirable. Now, if you have Salesforce administrative certification and a Salesforce business and analyst certification, and you have admin and business analyst experience, um, pretty soon your profile is going to get through the ecosystem and you're going to have calls coming out of the ears. Uh, I, I still get five calls and five emails a day, every single day from recruiters all over the board. So remember, companies are trying to squeeze out as much experience as they can. They want more bang for their buck. Beware of last minute changes, even, even after receiving a job offer. So I had a job offer and they said, you can start in two weeks. So about a week later, Everything was going good. So I cut all ties with uh, the other potential offers coming in. Mistake. You got to look out for yourself. Two days before I was to start the job, they told me that they were not going to bring me on, uh, that the uh, chief technology officer had a chance to look at his budget. Apparently, he never looked at his budget. So he looked at his budget and said, oh, we can't bring anybody on. So they didn't bring me on. Now I burned my other potential offers and I was starting all over from scratch. Needless to say, I was not a happy camper. Don't let them treat you poorly. If you're being treated in bad, run because it's just going to get worse from there. 
There's tons of opportunities out there. Embrace the bomb. Here's what I, people get afraid of interviews. I embrace the bomb. I want to go into an interview and I want to bomb because I'm going to learn. Obviously, I don't like plan for that, but each interview is a, is a, for each application, each job role, embrace the journey, uh, bomb, bad interview, shake it off, get back on the horse, learn from it, take some notes. And pretty soon, after about 20 or 30 interviews, you're going to start getting really good at and some, and some things you have no control over. Like, you know, when they're asking you questions during the interview that are not even in the job description, you have no control over that. That's just them not really paying attention to the job that they're actually offering. LinkedIn is your number one tool. Back to, again, don't complain on LinkedIn. If you're uh, having a, you know, LinkedIn is a professional marketplace where recruiters and hiring managers live. They're on there every day. So if you're frustrated, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling beaten down, and you want that encouragement, I really, really would suggest that you go to your, your, your best friend, your family, Dr. Phil, but don't do it on LinkedIn. So anytime I see people posting their diatribe about how the world sucks and their manager sucks and woe is me, blah, blah, blah. What can I do? I've, I've submitted 4,000 resumes and I can't get any calls. What can I do? Any tips? My first tip is you had to delete this post and then start from scratch. Many hiring managers and recruiters will see a candidate They'll go on LinkedIn and they'll do just 10 minutes of research. What's their background? What's their experience? Oh, are they posting? Have they posted any cool articles? Oh, okay. Here's a post by Jerry and it's negative, 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 negative. He's having a bad life, but oh, well, I can't fix Jerry. So I'm going to go on to the next guy because, you know, I don't want to deal with a guy who's negative all the time. Uh, remember when it comes to resume bullets and LinkedIn experience page, and I found this to really, really help. You got to use the Google XYZ method. Every experience, every job you've had, you know, three, four, five bullets. If you use tealhq.com, it will help you understand how many bullets you should have. But every single bullet needs to use the Google XYZ method. Super important. I accomplished X, never I. Accomplish X as measured by Y by doing Z. In this case, X stands for what you achieved, Y is the measurable way you achieved it, and Z is how you made this change. So that really, no more of this. I was a manager of three people. I answered the phones. I entered users into Salesforce. It's like, yeah, okay, and so that's the question that goes in people's mind if you don't uh, word those bullets properly. Remember, the entire process, this job hunting process is like eating an elephant. Take it one bite at a time, day by day, chip away, brick by brick, and things will start happening. All right, so here's some tools for you, and I'm going to post this on the uh, video on the, uh, the LinkedIn post. One of my number one information sources that has helped me through interviews is Salesforce Ben. Salesforce Ben, I think it's salesforceben.com. Salesforce Ben, I would take their top 20 questions you're going to get asked as a Salesforce admin. Now, a lot of these questions we all know the answers to, but when I take it and put it in Notion or Microsoft OneNote and I have it on my screen during a Zoom, inter, uh, uh, you know, a, a video interview, it just helps remember because you get in these interviews, they're asking your question, and you're kind of you're kind of nervous. You're kind of stressed out a little bit. So stuff sometimes just doesn't come to mind. So I always have a cheat sheet next to me just to kind of remind me. Oh yeah, the, this is you know why we you know try to keep data secure. And oh, this is the official reason why you know uh, we, we enter users in a certain way. So uh, job boards, LinkedIn, Indeed, Dice. Those are the three that I focus on. LinkedIn, Indeed, and Dice. TealHQ.com, great tool. I think they have a free plan. Uh, the one I'm on is like $9 a week or something because I only use it for two or three weeks and then I'll like shut down the account and then a month later I'm maybe firing it back up. Um, so we're going to get into real quick my, my, my silver bullet 
And let's see. Okay. We got the silver bullet coming next. Need experience. We got cut off on the end there uh, at the bottom. Do free work for local nonprofits. You've probably heard that one. Find a lo local nonprofit or a national nonprofit. Just say, hey, I am a Salesforce administrator. I'm certified. I just need experience. I don't mind working for free. If you can give me a project you need help with, uh, that will help. I, I just worked with a young lady yesterday from Maryland. Her name is Natalie. And Natalie was doing exactly, she's doing exactly that. And she's an intern um, for a company. And she's working full time there. So ultimately, after a few months, she's going to have this experience that she has on her resume. When it comes to now, see, I think a little bit differently. Uh, you're not in, if you are an intern at a company and you are, uh, as a Salesforce admin or whatever, you're not an intern on your resume. You're not an intern on LinkedIn. You are a Salesforce administrator. So I eliminate all the part-times designations, full-time designation, remote, on-site, uh, contract role. Why, why would you put that in your LinkedIn profile? Like when a recruiter looks at your LinkedIn profile and they see a job and it says that Jerry worked at ABC Home Builders as a Salesforce administrator, in my opinion, that's it. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm a Salesforce administrator. They will almost never ask you, oh, by the way, was that an internship? Uh, was that part time? Um, was the owner your brother? Was the owner of the company a friend that hired you because you needed experience? No, they never ask you that. So just give them the information they need. The rest of that, you can give them if they ask. And I would say 95% of the time, they will not ask. Uh, let's see. Another one is clicked. I think it's somebody might be able to like confirm this, but it's clicked.com. They have these kind of hybrid classes slash team sprints slash experience that you can actually put on your resume. You get a certification. And if you're taking those on a semi-regular basis, you just leave clicked on your LinkedIn profile as like a job. Many hiring managers have no idea what Clicked is. They don't know if it's a company you work for. They don't know if Clicked is just a class. They don't have no idea what it is. So let them wonder. If they ask, you can tell them. But you don't have to offer the information. Oh, it was just a class. Never fall into that trap of it was just a this or it was just a that. If you're doing Salesforce admin work and you're in a project, put that on as a job or put that on in your experience. Because think about LinkedIn profile. It says experience in the top of that heading. It doesn't say official job in which you worked full time, five days a week. It's experience. So you're listing your experience. Let them ask you if it was part time internship or whatever. Most of the time they won't. All right, here's my silver bullet. Need to show experience. I see lots of people just how do I get experience? How do I show experience? I don't know how I can show experience. I can't get experience because I don't have the experience and it becomes this circular thing. Well, you got to think outside the box. Here's what you can do. My silver bullet is start your own Salesforce consultancy. Now in Arizona, you can start an LLC for about $50. Other states is $100, $150, some are probably even $200. But start an LLC and give it a cool name. Like go on uh, the, the Salesforce, um, God, Salesforce App Store. I'm going to call it that. <laughs> Salesforce App Store. And look at some of the big companies on there. Accenture, Centric, all these companies. They have cool one word names. So you come up with a cool name and then you create a cool logo. Have your buddy who's a graphic designer create a cool logo for you if you can't do it yourself. Then you go on LinkedIn company page and you create a company page for your new company. Okay. Then if you want to take it a step further, which I recommend is build a little website, make it look cool, make it, you know, look like a national company. Now this is your company and 
because it's your company, you got all this flexibility. First of all, you can go out and hunt down some clients, right? If there is a local company that can't afford $300 an hour that some of these big consultancies charge, maybe you're 125 an hour, so you're a third of the price. Well, you can get a client there, and because you have your own company, you're in business. Here's another piece of that. Because it's your company, you can hire yourself. Matter of fact, by the federal government, the IRS requires you to be on, be in your company as an employee. As an employee. Think about that. I'm going to go back to my other view here. Think about that. Uh, let's see here. Make sure I got, okay. We got audio going. You have a company. You own the company. And you're going to hire yourself. Well, guess who gets to decide what job or what role you have? You do. You own it. So if you want to, if you're focusing on business analysts, you're a Salesforce business analyst. You're going to go out and pick up clients if, if you can. You're going to do side work. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. But you own this cult consultancy. And now it's on LinkedIn as a job. And I guarantee you, if you, if you get 100 interviews, <clears throat> 95 of them will never ask you if you own the company. They just don't. They just look at it. Yep, you work for ABC Salesforce Consulting. And so, hey, Bob, uh, what kind of work are you doing at ABC Salesforce Consultancy? Well, you know, we work with clients and we do implementations and we work with them on Service Cloud. We do this, we do that. You got a story to tell. And as each month goes by, with your company on your uh, LinkedIn profile, that's just, you're just clocking those. Uh, pretty soon, a year's gone by. You've been working for your own company, picking up projects here and there, and now you got experience that you created. And don't put on their founder, CEO, none of that. Just leave it blank. Just put Salesforce administrators, Salesforce business uh, analysts, Salesforce marketing uh, cloud expert, whatever you want to call it. And um, every month that goes by, like I said, it's going to be your baby that you control. And, you know, if you're in an interview and they ask you, hey, this company is, you know, ABC Salesforce recruiters, is that your company? I, I had a couple of ask me, you know, on, on that and no big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my company. Well, so what, what do you do? We're a consultancy. Sometimes they ask you real obvious questions like, what do you do? We're a Salesforce consultancy, you know, like Accenture, uh, Slalom, any, any of the big boys. So that's it. Uh, let's see here. We went through the takeaways. We talked about my journey. Um, don't give up, folks. It's hard out there. I'm, I'm telling you. I see it. I see it myself. I've had roles. I've been cut after two weeks just recently, <laughs> and it's brutal. But you got to put a smile on, get up in the morning, walk around the block, get some sunshine on your face, drink a little coffee, get some caffeine in your system and start fresh every single morning. Look in the mirror and say, hey, today I'm going to kick some kick some butt. And remember that every single application, every resume, every profile tweak, every article you write on LinkedIn is another step towards your goal. And it's, it's just a numbers thing. The more stuff you do, the more people you talk to, the more things happen. So let's just run across some uh, questions here and see if I got anything. We're at the end here. We're going to wrap things up here in a few minutes. Uh, let's see here. Anybody have like a very specific, what if they ask about your supervisor? Okay. Now I'm assuming, uh, Cheryl, you're referring to if you have your own company. Well, if you get cornered, you can always just tell the truth, right? You can always say, oh, that, that's my company. Yeah, I and, and sometimes they'll ask you things like, oh, it's your company. Well, so you, you've been running this company for about a year? Yes, I have. Oh, okay, and what kind of projects do you do? So obviously, it doesn't, you know, once they understand that, they're not going to ask you for your supervisor. Um, and honestly, out of about 70 interviews, I honestly can't even really think of any that ask for my supervisor. Some of these jobs will ask you for three business references from supervisors. 
that that managed you. So you create those ahead of time, have them at the ready, fireman email, done. Uh, any opinions on Upwork Fiverr from Doug Crew type gigs? Uh, I'm thinking about starting a company or combining the two. Um, Upwork Fiverr. So think about this. You start a company, you start an LLC, and uh, you're not going to call it, you know, Doug's Consultancy LLC. By the way, start an LLC, but create a DBA, doing business as, never have, now this is my marketing and branding brain coming out, never have LLC in your company name, your customer facing, the one you put out there. You know, if that's your legal um, corporate structure, it shouldn't be marketed. You never saw a car driving down the street and on the side of it, it said Ford Corporation. It just says Ford. So... Don't put your name in your company. Make it sound like it has some gravitas. Give your company a name that has gravitas. So, Doug, back to your question. Um, I would say that think of Fiverr, think of Upwork, think of LinkedIn, all as referral sources, all as streams of business coming in. And it really doesn't make any difference where you're you know, doing things. If you're getting traffic and you're getting little projects from Fiverr, um, that's okay. If you get a job for $10, it's okay because that job can turn into other stuff. Plus, it gives you experience. So don't, you know, feel bad about taking a small job that doesn't pay very well. Those jobs, many times I have found you do 10 jobs all for really low money, but that 10th job. They know a guy named Bob. Bob owns a big company and just so happens he needs a Salesforce administrator. So things happen when you do more things. Let's see what else. Any opinions on Upwork? We already covered that one. I've been thinking about doing just this. That's cool. That was from Doug. Uh, Christina, your work for... Oh, okay. She's talking to Doug. <laughs> Hey, Jerry, we've known each other from Clicked. Oh, that's Maria. I remember Maria Sliska. Let's see. Alina, pulling jobs for budget reasons makes you wonder if they check their bank account before posting the job. Yes. Yes, I have to agree. Here's something that was shocking to me. It, it just rocked my world. All these years, I thought all the flaky people out there were, in, were job seekers trying to find jobs. Those, those were the flaky people. Like, am I flaky? No, I'm not flaky. I'm a pretty straight up person. I'm pretty honest. And, you know, I work hard. It's about 50-50. There's just as many flaky companies, flaky recruiters, flaky hiring managers, as there are flaky people looking for jobs, at least in 2024. It, it just blows my mind at the level of disrespect that I've seen from some of these managers. Um... Yeah, it, it's just, it's shocking how some of them treat other people. And you just have to chalk it up to like, hey, maybe they got a bad life. Maybe things are not going good for them. They're taking it out on other people. But just, you know, be kind, be nice. Because, you know, it'll come back around. There are thousands of jobs out there, thousands. And I, I think most of them are on LinkedIn, but there's thousands of jobs. Something doesn't work out, move on. Don't get on LinkedIn and start complaining. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Any fresh questions? Thank you for the advice. Yes, I need to learn to not say too much either. Um, one of, talking is one of my fortes. And sometimes uh, us folks that are a little bit ADD, uh, what's cool about us is that we work hard, we're passionate, we want to do a good job, but sometimes we just need to shut up right? Any more questions? Let's see here. I don't see anything else coming through. Let me go back early. I said, okay, there was an acoustic issue. I think we fixed that a long time ago. Anyway, thanks a lot, folks, uh, for joining. This uh, whole class is going to be on LinkedIn as well as YouTube. And it's going to eventually, uh, probably by tomorrow, be on my regular podcast, which is Spotify, uh, Apple uh, Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. It's just the audio-only version. 
And Christina, thank you so much for thanking me. I appreciate that. I do this because I enjoy it. It gets my name out there and I have fun. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. I need subscribers and I need likes. <laughs> Especially if you go on YouTube, look for Jerry Rigged Podcast and you will see um, you know, where you can like and subscribe. So Remember just to stay positive, keep pushing forward, and uh, don't let it get you down. And by the way, you can ping me on LinkedIn anytime you want. Doesn't bother me. Have a great day. Take care and enjoy your week. The Jerry Rigged Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or Google. Business technology for CEOs, managers, and business owners. We're here to deliver insights and strategies without the fluff. This is the Jerry Rigged Podcast. Mm-hmm.